Hey, everybody. Sean Tassone, America's Holistic Gynecologist, author of the Hormone Balance Bible. The Hormone Balance Bible is a book I wrote in 2021 through HarperCollins. 500 pages of what you should know as a perimenopausal or menopausal woman. After I've sat with about 50,000 women and listened to their stories, I've come up with some common threads. And I found the 12 most common hormone imbalances in women after sitting with 40,000 women and realized that we needed a better way to talk about hormones. And that's what the Hormone Balance Bible is. It's all about testing each hormone individually, talk about the actual hormones themselves, the imbalances, the storylines behind those, and how you can help yourself without the need of seeing a doctor for everything except for the hormonal part. So there's other things that you can try and things that you can do. It's on sale on Amazon. I'm also the um, person who's in charge of creating the podcast Confessions of a Male Gynecologist. So if you are looking for more information about HRT, please check those out. Now, the question being is, does estradiol kill you? Now, it's kind of a stupid question because if it actually did... We wouldn't be giving it in the first place. Does it cause cancer? Unfortunately, the Women's Health Initiative years ago, probably 15, 16 years ago, told us that there was an increased risk of breast cancer in the arm of the study that had Premarin and Provera or Prempro, which are both horrible synthetic forms of estradiol and progesterone. The estrogen-only arm, actually, of that study that actually used the crappy estrogen Premarin did not have an increased risk of breast cancer. It was the combination of the two. And does that translate into estradiol and progesterone that are bioidentical? Probably not. And I have another um, video from a few weeks back where I talk about a new study that came out that actually shows estradiol replacement in women over the age of 65 decreases colon, breast, and lung cancers, decreases the rates of dementia, and decreases morbidity by 19% and mortality. So you might even live longer. But let's talk about this. Estradiol. If estradiol caused cancer, you would see every woman in the world getting cancer because every woman in the world has estradiol. The other thing is you would then also expect women who are in their probably 20s who have higher levels of estradiol, you would be expecting them to be getting breast cancer. But the truth is women get breast cancer more in their 70s and 80s, and it's because of their age, not necessarily because of estrogen. Now, estrogen will stimulate a breast cancer cell that has an estrogen receptor on it, it will cause that cell to be stimulated and possibly grow. But that's completely different than cause. And so if you were prescribed estradiol and you go home and you're feeling great and then you are at Thanksgiving and your aunt or your sister or your whoever says to you, oh my God, I wouldn't take estrogen because it causes breast cancer, ask them for the study that shows that. Never will they be able to produce that. And they're probably just repeating some sort of garbage that they heard on TikTok. As always, if you want to leave a question in the live discussion, in the live chat, I'll try to answer that at the end of the discussion here. It's not something where I can give, obviously, personalized medical advice, but I can try to answer to the best of my ability. Um, but we're talking today about estradiol and the fear the fear that surrounds it. And the fear comes from the Women's Health Initiative. Unfortunately, an entire generation of women and physicians were ruined by this horrible study that has since been retracted on multiple occasions. It's not a good study. The authors that wrote it actually said that it was a horrible study. They've actually retracted most of it. So the reality is that you, you can use estrogen and you can use it safely. So I get this question all the time. My sister had breast cancer, my mom had breast cancer, my mom and grandmother had breast cancer, so I don't wanna go on estrogen. And that's your choice, you don't have to. I mean, obviously, going on estrogen replacement is just quality of life, right? So, but here's the thing, just because you have a family member that has breast cancer does not exclude you. It's not a contraindication to hormone replacement. I don't care what the doctor tells you. 
They haven't obviously read a study in 25 years, but the point being is that you're not contraindicated. The only relic, real contraindication to estrogen replacement is going to be if you have breast cancer personally and you have estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, and even then you may not want to go on estrogen and you don't have to. But even then, it's not totally contraindicated because I have a few patients in my practice that are well over five years from their breast cancer diagnosis and they're clean and they want to go on hormone replacement because they feel miserable. And even in those instances, I will, because I know them, we've had this discussion over and over again, they understand that there's a risk of stimulating a cancer cell if there's one in their body, but it's not going to cause more cancer. So I really want to drive home today to not be afraid of estradiol therapy. I know it's pervasive. I know it's out there. I get this question daily. You don't have to be fearful of estrogen. You, If you have a significant family history, you should be doing different types of screening. You might want to do MRIs and things like that of the breast, but it doesn't necessarily exclude you from hormone replacement. And you should never be afraid of that. You should have open, honest discussions with your provider about your health care. You should feel listened to. And if they tell you things like, oh, we don't test levels or we don't, we don't prescribe that or whatever it is, feel free to look elsewhere, look outside the system. Hello from a current patient. Hello, Michelle. I just got back on estradiol at 64, almost 65. I'm hoping I did the right thing. I mean, you did the right thing for your bones and for your heart because estradiol therapy will indeed lower bad cholesterol, raise good cholesterol. It also helps stop bone loss. So there are definitely positives, not to mention the vaginal dryness, the skin changes, uh, just the overall mood and well-being. Um, I also think I should be on testosterone, but who prescribes that? Same doctors that prescribe estrogen can prescribe testosterone. They're just choosing not to, or they're choosing not to um, talk about it because they don't know how to do it. Is estradiol valorate by it? Yes. I've only been on the estradiol for four days. Well, you probably need to be on it for longer <laughs> to notice significant changes. Luckily, my female primary care doesn't um, believe in that study. I'm 71, been on estradiol progesterone since 54. Feeling look great. That's great. Um, hopefully, it doesn't matter that she's a female because I'm a male and I still prescribe it. So the gender of the provider usually doesn't matter. I'm adopted and therefore have no medical history. So no doctor would prescribe hormones, even though my blood work showed I was very low. I finally found a doctor that will help me feel like myself. And that's, this is what I'm talking about. That's being gaslighted when you have, because you're adopted for Christ's sakes and you don't know your family history. The family history is relatively insignificant when it comes to HRT. It's your history that we're mostly concerned about. Not only your medical history, but just your history of how are you living your life? How do you feel? How are you getting along during the day? I mean, those are the questions that really matter. You being adopted, I mean, come on. What the hell does that even mean? I don't even understand why that would, that, that is a doctor that, that made that up. That's completely made up. It's total garbage and you need to find a new physician. At perimenopause, estradiol stayed at 148 and heavy irregular bleeding and then menopause happened now it's 38, no bleeding said normal levels. 38 is not a normal level. You need to have your estrogen at least around 60 to prevent bone loss. So 38 is not going to get the job done. 38, you could definitely have symptoms of vaginal dryness. You could have symptoms of cholesterol being out of whack or signs. You could have symptoms of hot flashes and mood swings. So definitely something that you need to push a little harder for. Um, what are can't read that. Fortunately, I had a wise gynecologist who prescribed orthoprefest. Uh, orthoprefest, unfortunately, would also be a synthetic estrogen, so I personally wouldn't use it just in my practice. Is there a non-synthetic estradiol vaginal cream? Well, estradiol, if it's estradiol vaginal cream, it's not synthetic. It's synthetic in the sense that it's made in a lab, but it's bioidentical. The cream that you don't want to go on, in my opinion, is Premarin. 
But if it says estradiol cream, then that's bioidentical. But the question that I always have is why are you on estradiol cream vaginally? If you have vaginal dryness, then it makes more sense to me to get your estrogen levels in your blood up high enough to prevent you from having vaginal dryness. Usually just using the vaginal cream, well, sure, that helps the vagina, but it's not helping your heart. It's not helping your bones. It's not helping your skin or the other organ systems like your brain. It's not helping you at all other than vaginally. And, you know, you're not just a vagina. Is there, let's see. Prefest is no longer made because probably it's garbage. Um, let's see. Uh, what about combination patch? So here's the thing with combi patch. Combi patch has a bioidentical estrogen, so it's estradiol, but it has a progestin progesterone. I don't use it in my practice because of the synthetic progesterone. I would much rather use micronized progesterone. I understand the convenience of combi patch um, because you just put on one patch, but I don't like to prescribe the synthetic progesterones or progestins. I think they're horrible for the body. I think they increase the risks potentially of cancer. We've seen that in multiple studies, not a significant increase, about one in a thousand, but it's still there. And we know that micronized progesterone also has added benefits that progestins don't have, like it calms anxiety, it helps you sleep. The benefits are truly outstanding compared to a progestin. I don't need progesterone. I had a hysterectomy. So that's a question that I get a lot too. No, you don't need progesterone to prevent uterine cancer but you might want it because it helps with sleep, it helps cause calmness and serenity, uh, it, it balances out the stimulatory effects of the estradiol on, on your brain and other tissues. So no, technically you don't need it, but you might want it. And that's the thing, when doctors tell you you don't need progesterone, that's true if you have a hysterectomy and you're receiving estrogen, but you might want it and you might wanna ask for it. So that's completely different. So. As I said, I am here just answering a couple questions, and I like to keep these around 10 minutes, which is right where we're at. I am 66. I have never been on HRT. Gynecologists never discussed it, blah, blah, blah. Should I get a coronary calcium score? I, I think everybody should get a coronary artery calcium score, CAC. Uh, probably over the age of 50, if you haven't done one, you should get one done because it's always good to be preventative in your healthcare and getting a CAC done, they're about $95 and they're easy to do. And it will tell you if there's calcium in your blood vessels of your heart. And, you know, some people don't want to know, but it does help you be a little more proactive. Um, I got one done. My score was 23, which is low, but that meant there was calcium in my coronary vessels. And it was a bit of a shock. It was about two years ago. And so I started supplementing. I started, I lost 40 pounds. I mean, there's things you can do and it just might stimulate you a little bit. Also, if it's negative, that's great, but don't get complacent with that, you know? How long, how soon from starting prescribed do you recommend starting on some supplements? Um, well, when I see patients in the office or online, um, I start. I make supplement recommendations the same time I recommend hormone replacement. I've been on estradiol gel and progesterone pill for almost a year, but now I've got bleeding. Um, you need to call your doctor. I, I can't really comment on your care. So anytime you have anything wonky, I always recommend calling your doctor. Do you think DIM supplements are good? So DIM supplements are usually recommended by people that don't understand what the hell they're talking about. And the reason that I say that is because DIM is usually prescribed for women who are on hormone replacement because they think the DIM lowers your estrogen level or keeps it under control. And the problem is DIM doesn't do anything for your estrogen levels. It doesn't lower, it doesn't raise, it doesn't do anything for your estrogen level. What it can do is it can help you. There's, there's a, an estrogen called estrone that estradiol breaks down into. And then estrone is what your body clears out. And the way that it clears it out is it turns it into three types of estrone, 2-methoxy, 4-methoxy, and 16-methoxy estrone. 16-methoxy just cycles back into estrone and estradiol, or estriol, sorry. The 
four methoxyestrone is labeled as a carcinogen, and two methoxy is actually thought to be cancer protective. DIM will move you from making four methoxy, the carcinogen, to the two methoxy pathway. So it can it can shift that, but it doesn't change your estrogen levels at all. I don't use biased. Biased is a combination cream between or a pill that combines estradiol and estriol. The problem that I have with biased is that the estriol that's in it binds the estrogen receptor, but it's so weak that it doesn't do anything. And what it does when it binds on the estrogen receptor is it keeps the estradiol, which is about 100 times stronger, away from the receptor. So you're actually blocking your your estrogen receptors when you use biased. And doctors or providers that use biased are are using, are showing you that they don't have any idea what they're doing. So again, I would find a different provider. Uh, I'm using estradiol cream once a week, no problems, but when using twice a week, I get breast tenderness. I can't comment on your personal care. I, I don't, I, I wouldn't know where to start. Um, there's uh, no difference between creams and patches in my case. Um, you can look. Um, I'm licensed in 27 states with regards to testosterone therapy. Um, you just have to look around and ask. Um, I On Instagram, Sean Tasson, MD, I have my second pinned post. I have all the states where I am uh, licensed. And if I'm in one of those states, I can certainly see you. Um, Maryland is not one of the states. Sorry about that. Um, maybe in the future it will be, but currently it's not. My friend is 80 and never got HRT because of multiple myeloma runs in her family. That is absolutely asinine. Um, well, not the my, multiple myeloma, but the fact that they didn't give her HRT. The problem is now that she's 80, because she has been without estrogen for so long, if you start estrogen therapy on her, you could cause a heart attack it's rare, but it could happen because of that calcified area in the heart. It can soften the calcifi calcified plaques and cause them to break off estrogen, not testosterone or progesterone, but the estrogen could. So I would recommend that she get, a, if she was my patient, a calcium artery score to make sure that she doesn't have any calcifications. Um, great questions, as always. Um, I challenge you again to head over to Amazon to get a copy of the Hormone Balance Bible. If you're struggling, it will answer a lot of your questions. I wrote it with the patient in mind, and I wrote it because of all this misinterpreted, and misinterpreted garbage that's out there and the information that's being fed to you by influencers that have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. In many cases, doctors don't know what they're talking about. So I'm giving you my interpretation of things. The Hormone Balance Bible talks about the 12 most common hormone imbalances in women from thyroid to testosterone to estrogen, progesterone, cortisol. So check that out. You can get it on Amazon. It's about $14, $15, 500 pages, talks about testing, talks about um, the imbalances and gives stories. It's great. So um, head on over, get that. Follow me on Instagram and I will talk to you tomorrow.